What's up everybody, my name is Robert. I am a product designer. And for the last couple of years, I've been working on a very special project called Alloy Healthcare. I'm setting out to redesign and rebuild the EMR. And uh, this YouTube channel is a documentation. It is a uh, my way of telling and keeping you up to date with what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and giving you a little bit of a sneak peek into how a startup works, is attempting to work, something like that. Uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about making progress and how I, let's say, hold myself accountable to getting things done. I think one of the hardest things potentially about starting a startup and, and doing anything creative where you're kind of going off, maybe starting a business or being a freelancer or whatever, learning a new skill, um, the hardest thing about doing any of that is making sure you're actually doing it and getting things done and, and, and learning and, and continuing to improve yourself. And uh, today I want to give you a little bit of a progress update where I'm at, but I also want to talk a little bit about how I do that and uh, some of the theory that I've used to support myself. Okay, so before I get into exactly how I uh, get things done or how I hold myself accountable to getting things done, I want to talk about an idea called the four tendencies. Um, I heard about this on a podcast uh, probably five or six years ago. Uh, it was developed by this four tendencies framework was developed by a woman named Gretchen Rubin. Uh, she wrote this book by the same name, The Four Tendencies. And basically what it is, is um, it is a framework that kind of groups uh, people together based on how we meet outer expectations, those of our coworkers or bosses or family members versus meeting our own inner expectations. Uh, maybe uh, we you know, have these goals and dreams and desires to do things and build things and make things or learn things. And, and that is an inner expectation. That is something that you want to do yourself, not because anybody else is telling you you need to or have to. Um, the four groups are upholder, obliger, rebel, and questioner. And basically each one of these is two statements. They either meet outer expectations or they, res or they meet inner expectations. So it's one of two things. Or they resist outer expectations or resist inner expectations. Now, I won't go through all of it. I'll link the podcast I listened to down below. I'll, I'll, link, I'll link to her book down below. Uh, so if you want to go see it, you can. Um, but basically, the idea is that she, if I remember correctly, and if, if I'm misremembering this, I'll correct it in the edit. But if I remember correctly, she mentioned that most people usually fall into like an obliger, rebel, or questioner. Usually most people are like an obliger or a questioner, if I remember correctly. So an obliger is somebody who meets ex outer expectations really well, do a really great job of meeting those expectations that others have of you. But they often resist or have trouble meeting their own inner expectations. Um, and a questioner is basically the exact opposite of that. They resist outer expectations, but do a really good job of meeting inner expectations. Now, that's where she says most people fall into that category, if I remember correctly. The upholder, on the other hand, is somebody who meets outer and inner expectations really well. And that's a much rarer trait. If I, if I remember correctly, she says that that's a super rare trait and that mostly entrepreneurs and uh, people who like start and create things are usually upholders because it requires a certain level of being able to meet an outer expectation and be able to meet an inner expectation of what I'm supposed to be doing, how I'm supposed to be doing it, and who I'm supposed to be doing it for. Now, I've usually grouped myself into an obliger, but I kind of see the value in being an upholder. I do a really good job of meeting outer expectations, but I often have a trouble or, or resist inner expectations. But I want to be someone who meets inner expectations just as well as someone who meets outer expectations. And so what I want to talk, to, talk about today is I want to talk about a framework I've used to develop and kind of essentially coach myself into being an upholder, if you will. Um, so the way I've done that is by doing three things. I build in public, I set tasks and deadlines for myself. I know it sounds super, I know that might sound uh, obvious, but just bear with me. And I also do retrospectives or reviews. Now, these are three things that I do very simply to make sure that I am meeting my own inner expectations 
and meeting outer expectations at the same time. Because I know that if I can lean into this uh, kind of strength of meeting inner external accountability, essentially, then I am much more likely to be successful. So the build in public mentality basically means this. This YouTube channel, this is build in public. Um, I talk about what I'm doing a lot. Um, before I was doing these YouTube videos, I was doing Loom videos. Um, before I was in, I was doing the Loom videos as part of a newsletter. Before the newsletter, I had a blog. Um, and before the blog, I was talking to other people about it already. I was talking to physicians, I was talking to my friends and family about it. And all of those things were ways for me to make sure that I'm building in public, but also essentially talking to others about it. If I know that I have a community or a group of people who are looking and essentially an audience who's looking for these videos and these updates, I'm way more likely to continue working on this, not necessarily because I don't want to otherwise, but because I know that if I don't, then I'm gonna have people coming and asking me where stuff is. In fact, when I took my little hiatus between like October of last year, September of last year, and like February, I actually got several emails and messages from people saying, hey, are you still working on this? How's, how's things going? This is a really, in my opinion, if you find yourself being someone who meets external expectations and accountability really well, but has a trouble with that internal stuff, tell people about what you're working on. Ask them to follow along. Ask them to uh, keep you updated or keep them updated about what you're doing. Um, now, you don't still have to make a YouTube channel. I'm not saying you need to do that at all. I'm saying, but you could use Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, you could use Instagram. Anywhere that you can kind of share quick, easy updates, maybe once a week, once every other week, maybe once every couple of days, depending on where you are and what you're doing. Anywhere you can do that is a great location to build in public and show people what you're doing. The second thing is to make sure you have tasks and deadlines. Now, I'm actually someone who has always kind of shunned calendars and agendas. I can remember growing up every year we'd get these agendas in, in school and I would every year say, okay, I'm gonna use it this year, I'm gonna use it this year, I'm gonna use it this year. And I would use it for like a couple days and then it would just fall off. I used to think that I was just lazy or that I didn't know what I was doing. Um, sometimes I still think that, but what I realized is I actually just needed a productivity system that worked for me. Now, when it comes to this project in particular with Alloy Healthcare, the way I found to do that is to, instead of looking at a day or even a week to week schedule, at least for this phase, I need to be thinking about a quarterly schedule. So what if some of you were around um, in February, you may remember me making a video about what I'm going to be doing in 2022 in this research and design roadmap. And what I did was I said, here are the three things that I'm doing in Q1 and here are the three things I'm gonna do in Q2. And the goal is to say, hey, at any one time, I need to be working on one of three things. I'm working on either for this quarter, it was the patient encounter flow, payments and incentives or value-based care, and then marketing site uh, V1.5. And the reason I did this was to say, I have these three things, I'm creating that clarity and that focus for myself, but it's also helping me say, not these other things I'm not going to be doing. And that's a really critical piece because I think that there is this tendency when you start something or you're trying to build a company or if you're an entrepreneur, that I feel like there's this thing, instead of FOMO, it's like fear of missing productivity, where you feel like you have to be pulled in a million directions, but creating clarity, especially in a task list like this, could be really helpful to ensure that you are going to get the things done that you need to get done. But the one thing that I do as well is I give myself deadlines. Now I gave myself a quarter Q1 deadline for most of these tasks. Um, now I started like halfway through Q1, so you know, we'll kind of fudge it a little bit, say maybe like one month after the end of Q1 into Q2. Um, but basically what I did was, particularly for this marketing site, uh, which if you followed me on LinkedIn or Twitter, you've seen that I'm getting ready to launch something. Um, and that is this marketing site 1.5. That's coming out April 28th. I've given myself that deadline to say, I need to get this out by then. What it does is it not only helps keep me externally accountable, because now I know there's a lot of people waiting for that, but it also makes me say, I have to prioritize what's really important here between making these videos, making this marketing site, doing social posts, things like that. I only have so many hours in a day, and I only have so many hours in a day to work on this. So I have to be really clearly focused. So 
when I, to make myself an upholder, not only am I building in public, but I'm also giving myself tasks, generalized tasks. I'm not going real deep. I'm not over-engineering it. And I'm giving myself deadlines. The last thing that I do in order to keep myself externally accountable or to at least keep myself internally accountable, meeting my internal expectations, is I do retrospectives. Now, if you're in tech, if you're in design, if you've done any kind of project management, you probably are familiar with retrospectives. Um, and this is what I want to do today. I want to give myself a retrospective and I've already thought about this, so I'm already pretty clear on where I'm going to go with this, but I want to do this, kind of think through this live with you. So what you can see is I've got this, uh, I've got this Q1 2022 retro document. Now, as a refresher, the three things I was going to do this quarter, patient encounter flow, payments and incentives, research essentially, problem definition, and then marketing site V1.5. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to give myself a score between one and four. One being didn't meet expectations, basically wasn't very successful. Uh, four being knocked it out of the park, flying colors, right? A++. Uh, two being you kind of did a good job, you kind of made it, but you more than not didn't really accomplish what you were trying to do. And three is kind of like, yeah, you did a good job, but you missed a couple things. Now, critically, I don't make this one to five. It's not one to 10 because I can't give myself a middle number. I can't give myself average. If I give myself one to five, I can give myself a three, which is neither good nor bad. And that's not the point of this exercise. The point of this exercise is to say it's either you did a good job, you were successful, or you weren't. And it's a, the idea is to be objective, to say, was I successful in meeting the goals that I had for this thing? And if so, three or four, and if not, it's a one or two. Now, the important thing here, and this is really easy to do, is to not let this be a uh, exercise in assigning blame or assigning uh, essentially value to your own person. Uh, the easy thing to do is if you're gonna give yourself a one is to say, I suck, I'm the worst thing that's ever happened. When the reality is that we're human. So we have to give ourselves a little bit of grace. Um, at the same time, we don't wanna be too easy on ourselves and say, hey, you know, I didn't really get that thing done, but I think I did a pretty good job anyway, so I'm gonna give myself a four. That's not the best way to do this either. It's you gotta find a way to do this in the middle and walk down that line. So let me do this with you real quick. Now I'm gonna start from the bottom here, marketing site V1.5. Now I didn't get it done in Q1. Again, I'm giving myself a little leeway here since I kind of started this in February. Um, but I do have a deadline by the end of this month, so I'm gonna give myself a three. Now, it's not quite exactly what I anticipated it being. Um, in fact, I'm not gonna say much more of it than that, but um, it's not it's not exactly what I want it to be, but it's pretty good and, it's, and I'm pretty proud of it. So I'm gonna give myself a three on that. I think I'm essentially achieving the goal that I had set out at the beginning. Um, payments and incentives, this became value-based care research. I did a couple of videos on that. Um, Unfortunately though, the thing that I did not do very well there is I didn't really make it concrete. I know in theory what value-based care is and how it works and why it works the way it does, but I really didn't take it the next step and say, what does this actually look like in practice? And I didn't talk to any physicians. I didn't really kind of, kind of close the loop there, if you will, in terms of actually making this something that I can use in the future. I'm gonna give myself a two on that score. It's not terrible. I didn't completely fail at it, but I really didn't accomplish what I was setting out to do. And then the last thing here is the patient encounter flow. This was a design task. Um, I didn't talk about this at all. I don't think this quarter, um, it's a, uh, you know, a really critical piece of an EMR, of course, and it's a very critical piece that any physician would want to know about. Any person vetting an EMR is going to want to know about how that works. Um, and I unfortunately did not do a great job of that. I really uh, kind of fell flat. Um, I'm gonna give myself a one. So I didn't really, I don't think, accomplish what I was setting out to do there. Well, I wanted to have this kind of whole flow kind of documented screen to screen at the very minimum, kind of have it all laid out, even if it wasn't refined completely in the UI. Um, and I just don't have that yet. So um, I'm gonna give myself a one there. So this is how I, have found the best way to keep myself accountable externally and to keep myself internally accountable to my own goals and dreams. I hope this was helpful. I hope it was interesting to see. Um, and I'm very interested to hear how you might 
find uh, maybe productivity hacks or similar uh, strategies you've used to keep yourself accountable to achieving goals and doing things that you want to do. If you have any thoughts or ideas, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. Um, if you like this video and you want to see more, please feel free to subscribe and like. And um, yeah, we'll see you real soon. I'm going to see you on April 28th for a big launch of Alloy Healthcare's new website and some other very special things. Uh, so I've got more videos to make. I've got lots to do before then. So I'm going to go. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.